In the next topic, we're going to talk about telecommunications, as well as some of the subdivisions of it, such as the internet, intranet, as well as extranet. Now, it's important that we realize that telecommunications form a vital part of our, our daily tasks, our interactions with other people, as well as the way in which we're going to do business. Now, we are going to focus on the following aspects. We're firstly going to start off with the fundamental concepts. We're then going to move over and talk about different types of media. We're going to spend a little time on network types and topologies. And then we're going to continue and talk about processing, um, different ways of communicating, connecting. We're going to talk about the World Wide Web, the difference between the World Wide Web and the Internet. And then finally, we're going to finish off by looking at various applications of telecommunications, as well as concepts such as intranets and extranets that we would find in our larger businesses. Now, let's start off by having an overview of telecommunications. Telecommunications can be defined as the electronic transmission of signals for any type of communication by means such as telephone, radio and television. Now, as we've indicated, telecommunications will impact businesses greatly and it's important that businesses keep track of the latest technologies and approaches to telecommunications. It allows us to have communication with people from other areas, from other countries, from other provinces, and generally it enables you to distribute your products and services to a bigger audience. Now as networks are connected with each other, they are going to transmit information more freely and that creates a competitive marketplace. So it's always important to ensure that your products and services are at the top of the range and that you can actually deliver what you promise your clients. Now, when we talk about telecommunications, it's important to know that people are generally concerned about the speed at which information is transmitted, and that is measured in bits per second. So typically, if you go and you buy a modem or if you want to get an internet connection, you would need to consider aspects such as bits per second. So the faster the rate, the more information can be sent. I will show a short video clip in the next section um, for copyright purposes. If it's not displayed, please follow or look at the list at the end of all the discussions. Now let's continue and look at the general model for telecommunications. This is typically what we know or what we've experienced before with telecommunications provided by, let's say, someone like Telcom. So what we typically had is you would have had a sending and a receiving computer. So you would have had a person sending a message and a person receiving a message. That message would have been sent over a cable, also known as a medium. It would go to a telecommunications device. Now in the older days, this typically would have included or would have be something like your modem. And then the modem would convert the computer signal, which we said in the topic discussion, the second one, it's going to take what is known as a digital signal, ones and zeros, and it's going to convert that to be an analog signal. Now just for interest sake, the name modem is actually an abbreviation and it stands for modulator demodulator indicating that it's going to change your signal between digital and analog so once your signal has been changed it's going to be sent across the medium provided by companies such as telcom on the other side a modem would intercept that analog signal it's going to convert it back to digital which will be sent to the computer and the receiving computer will have the ability to interpret and work with that signal. So this was typically the old um, approach that we had. Nowadays we find that 
many companies and many people are using wireless technologies so instead of sorry relying on a physical cable you can use wireless technologies such as 4g lte etc in order to send and receive your signals now let's go on and start to talk about a telecommunications medium now it can be classified as any material substance that carries an electronic signal that aids us in communicating between sending and receiving devices. So we are going to continue in this section by talking about guided media, for example, different types of cables. So that would be considered a telecommunications medium. Now before we do that, let's go and look at some other definitions. Now, as I've indicated, it's important to look at the bits per second that your network can communicate with other devices or other networks. Now this is typically referred to as your channel bandwidth and we do find that companies rely on this heavily when they invest in new technology and new infrastructure because if you think about it typically people don't want to sit and wait for, for data to download so the faster the speed the better. Now, we also get another term which we find called broadband communications. Now, broadband communications is telecommunication systems that can exchange data very quickly. And these are typically referred to as your uh, mobile communications as well as your, your LTE communications. Okay, so broadband, very fast data exchange. For example, if we look at wireless network capabilities, we find that um, we can send data at rates of 1.5 megabits per second and faster. If you think in terms of ADSL and fiber optics that we find are being installed more and more, um, some typical speed ranges are currently going up to 100 megabits per second. Again, the more or the faster it is, the more expensive it's going to be. Now, before we continue talking about these types of things, let's distinguish between the different types of communication media. Now, as the previous slide indicated, the media is any substance or any area that allows us to send signals. Now, when you select your media, there's a few things that you need to go and look at. Number one would be, how much information do you want to send over this medium? As you'll see in our next discussion, that a lot of the media are actually restricted due to their capabilities of what they can do. So you need to look at um, what is the strength, what is the maximum amount of data that can be sent. You also need to consider whether your users are going to be stationary or mobile. If it's mobile users, then you would probably need to use wireless technology such as satellite communication or microwave communication. If they're, station, uh, if they're stationary, then you can opt for guided media such as fiber optics and perhaps coaxial cables. The third thing, we need to think about the speed we need to think about the level of concern for privacy. So can people hack into your media and steal your information? And then also there might be some other business requirements. Now let's go and look at the different categories of media. Media can be divided into two categories, namely guided versus unguided or wireless communications. So guided transmission are those that are guided along a solid medium such as a wire or a fiber optic glass strand. On the other side, if we look at wireless communications, these are typically ones that are conducted over airwaves or that, um, that form part of electromagnetic radiation. So we're going to go into each one of these in more detail and see where everything fits into the bigger picture. So let's start by looking at guided media we've got four major categories namely twisted pair coaxial cable fiber optics and then broadband over power lines now the last one isn't that 
freely available in the South African and the African context, but there are certain countries where they are already using that and they've actually extended on that. So let's go through each one in a little more detail. If we look at the first one, Twisted, twisted Pear. Twisted Pear comes in two formats, either as shielded or unshielded. And all that it comes down to is when we talk about twisted pair, we've got pairs of cables that are twisted around each other. So if you look at the image here, you've got a brown cable and the white and brown cable. These are twisted together. There's a blue one, there's a green one, and there's an orange one. So you've got four combinations of cables. These are twisted around each other. And the main reason is that it should try to counteract electromagnetic interference and ensure that the signal can travel for a certain distance. Now we do get the two types, shielded and unshielded. So if you look at unshielded, you just get your wires and they are placed within a protective covering. We get shielded and shielded just contains some additional mesh foil like covers that protect them even more from outside interference so they can actually send information a little farther and perhaps faster twisted pair we typically find these in the form of telephone wires now our next category is called coaxial cables now coaxial cables were found on the older tv sets where you had to have an antenna and it would receive broadcasting signals and relay that from your antenna right through to your television. So if we look at it, it contains an inner conductor. Now these were usually copper, which was protected by a plastic coating. And then there was a insulated wired mesh around it to prevent, again, outside magnetic interference and tampering with it. The next category is fiber optics. Now this one is becoming more important or more popular because it's less prone to be stolen so if you think about twisted pair and coaxial people would go and try to steal the copper wires whereas with fiber optics you've got a very thin glass strand and if you steal this there's actually nothing that you can do with it now what we typically find is that in a fiber optic cable you have a bunch of small strands and these are made of pure glass. They are bound together and again they enable you to have communication. Now for twisted pair and coaxial communication we typically have electric um, signals that are sent over the media and for fiber optics we've got light waves that are sent as part of our communication. The last category that I've we're going to look, look at, but that's not really available in South Africa, is broadband over power lines. Now this is where the existing infrastructure, such as your electric grid and the cables inside your homes and offices, can actually be used for data transmission. So instead of connecting a whole new system, you use your existing grid and internet is provided over that grid. Now let's go and look at some additional information about each one of these three major categories of the wires. Now there's a few terms that you will see that we're going to find right through this discussion. The first one relates to attenuation. Now attenuation can be defined as the propagation of a signal. So the further a signal travels, the weaker a signal becomes. For example, if you stand 100 meters away from your friend, they will have a very difficult time hearing what you're saying versus when they're standing next to you. So the farther that signal travels, the weaker it becomes, the more distorted it becomes, and eventually they wouldn't be able to hear what you say. So that's attenuation. EMI, or electromagnetic interference, that is outside interference that could affect our signal. For example, the easiest way to explain this is to talk about something like a magnet. If you take a magnet and you place it next to a screen or your cell phone, you will see that your screen will change color and that your data will be disturbed. So for EMI, 
if you have a, co a computer cable and you take a magnet and you put it next to that cable it is actually going to damage your data and prevent you from, from receiving data the next concept that we find here is known as eavesdropping now eavesdropping is when somebody listens into a data communication or listens into a message now on a cable this can happen if they tap into that cable and typically we have concepts that's known as something like um, vampire taps so we always see this on spy movies where they take a device they clamp that device on a cable and miraculously they can actually listen into the message so let's start to look at these concepts and how it relates to the different cables so if we look at twisted pair we see that there's rapid attenuation meaning that your signal will quickly lose its strength coaxial cables allow signals to travel a little faster and then with fiber optics cables we even have less um, they are even less prone to attenuation because we have light signals which typically can travel far further for twisted pair they are very sensitive to EMI and eavesdropping so it's very easy to hack into them and to damage the signal by bringing in an electromagnetic force for coaxial cables it's only moderately susceptible so it's a little more secure and a little less prone to interference and the reason for that is that copper wire in the center is protected by a piece of plastic as well as that outer wide mesh now there's also a difference between the shielded and the unshielded twisted pair now if you see these definition uh, these abbreviations that one refers to unshielded and that one refers to shielded which were the two subcategories that we saw in the previous slide so for unshielded there's rapid attenuation and they are very sensitive to EMI and eavesdropping so these are your worst cables that you can possibly go and install for shielded twisted pair because it has that insulation that's protecting it a little more they are less prone to EMI and eavesdropping however shielded twisted pair is more expensive and more difficult to install because you actually need to ground these wires in order to ensure that your signals travels safely if we look at fiber optics we know that fiber optics actually uses light pulses to transmit data so these will be sent within the glass strand and they will actually bounce off the edges of the strand until they reach their destination it's going to transmit a very clear and secure piece of information or data and it's immune to EMI and eavesdropping the reason being if you try to hack into that you're going to break the cable and no transmission will take place on the other side magnetic interference will have very little or actually no effect with regards to your light that's being sent this all results in low attenuation so your signals do not break up we find that with these types of mediums we can send about 100 megabits per second of data ranging up to 200 gigabits and the ranges are going currently up to about 25 kilometers and more before you need to strengthen that and rebroadcast that light wave signal fiber optics are very expensive much more difficult to install and if there's a problem with, with a wire it's difficult to go and repair those and we typically find that many companies and institutions actually use fiber optics because it's secure because it's less prone to attenuation and um, EMI and eavesdropping that they use this for back as part of a backbone network now what is a backbone network a backbone network is a very high speed network where all of your data pretty much comes into your network so you would have a dedicated line um, something like the N1 the N1 is a major connection point between two cities and then we've got all these branching roads flowing out of it which would be your typical other wires so it's a high speed sending medium for your information 
Now let's go and look at the advantages and disadvantages of each and we've covered some of them already. If we look at Twisted Pair, these were typically used for your telephone services and they are widely available. The disadvantage however was that the speed at which we could send information as well as the distance limited us. Now coaxial cables, they were faster and cleaner, data were sent over them but they were also more expensive. For fiber optics, because we've got a smaller diameter, they require less space, we've got less distortion, high data rates, however on the bad, the bad aspect of it is it's very expensive and if there's mistakes it's very difficult to go and fix those mistakes. Now for the next discussion we're going to continue with guided media.